Hi, welcome to a and Jukebox Repairs, new videos series, you can do it, on how to diagnose and identify and possibly repair your jukeboxes. Um, my name is Bruce Wentworth and I'll be your instructor today. Today's troubleshooting ses session is going to be on troubleshooting uh, the row record uh, jukeboxes, models R84 through R94, and also the CD boxes, because a lot of the characteristics are the same as far as the amplifiers go and how sound reaches the amplifier. Um, so we're going to point out the different parts that you're going to be um, considering looking at when we when you do have a sound issue. And we're going to go over the different sound condition problems that you might run into and what, what, it, could, what it could do to fix the problem. Um, okay, well right now this is a row uh, record jukebox. It's a model R87, okay, which was made in 1984. Um, the record jukeboxes that we work on our models R84 and up, so 1980 and above. So this is an R87, it was made in, it was made in 1983. Um, it's, a, it's a 125 watt stereo model jukebox, uh, holds 100 records. Um, and we have CD boxes over there. That's a CD box on the end, and this is another, this, is, this one here is an R93. So, but again, the mechanisms are the same on all the row, uh, from the row R84 to R94. For 10 years, they kept the same mechanism, the same design. So we're going to go with some basic things that could cause you to have either no sound, or what could be the cause of it, um, or maybe intermittent sound, or maybe low sound in one channel, or no, no sound in, in one channel. And also distortion, what could cause distortion. Okay, first let's just go over the basic um, components of what what's involved in creating sound on your jukebox. Well, first of all, you have a tone arm, okay, which has a needle, and the needle rides the grooves of the record that picks up the vibrations that sends the signal to the cartridge that has a coil that sends the signals through these four little wires here to this little clip, which I'm going to grab one here so it'll give you a better idea. This is the tone arm assembly. This is that little clip we're talking about, which the four wires that are back on the cartridge are follows through the shaft of the tone arm, comes into the little clip, and the little clip goes onto the side of the frame of the tone arm. From there, you have a funnel cable that trans that trans that transports the signal from the little clip on the side of the tone arm to the funnel input on your amplifier. Okay, people call me from time to time, and one of the most common things we have is we don't have no sound. The jukebox is on. It's working. They hear a very tone, a very um, low tone coming off the record. And they say, "Why don't I have any sound?" Well, we're going to go. What could cause that? Okay, no sound is the first sound issue problem we're going to face right now. Um, talk about. Okay, what causes? What you need to get sound? First of all, you got to make sure that your record is on the jukebox when it's playing. Okay, I'm just going to bring this down to the thing. Okay, is the needle on the jukebox? Do you hear a little tone coming out? Okay, you do. That's great. The next thing is you look at the phono cable. Is it plugged in? It is plugged in. Then this phono cable goes over to the amplifier and plugs in right there. That's where the phono cable plugs in. All right, so now we have good, we have a direct communication from the mechanism, from the tone arm to the amplifier. What do you need to get sound out of the amplifier? First of all, you need an AC, 115 volt AC connection power coming into your transformer, which is over here. This is your AC plug. It plugs into the power supply. If this is unplugged, you won't get no sound. Okay, so you need to have that. The next thing we have very common is when they buy a jukebox and a number of times we talk to them and they find out that this volume control plug is either unplugged or not plugged in right. This is a five position plug with three wires. As you can see, the purple wire is on the bottom, and then another wire, then you have two open spaces, then you have a white with like a purple stripe on the top. Well, if you, if you invert that, which you can, and plug it in, you won't get any sound. So when you plug in the volume control plug, put the one wire at the top, then two open spaces, then two wires on the bottom, and just plug it in. Now the volume control plug goes to a volume control, which is on the back of the jukebox. And that volume control has two wires that comes up to this little terminal strip that's on the door. The door's missing here because we do this for service purposes. But as you see, you've got a red wire, a black wire, 
And in this case, we have a volume control on the wall. So um, let me just grab the volume controls. Okay. This is a volume control on the back of your jukebox. It's a potentiometer, okay? It's a 10K potentiometer. And those two red and black wires will follow up through the harness here and come into here. And as you can see, this is where the stereo clip is. And it tells you on the door where the stereo red wire should go and the black wire is common. And if you had a volume control, the white would be canceled. But when you, when you hook up a, like a remote volume control, like the one here on the wall, if you hook up one of those, of course, you're going to disconnect the, the red and black wire, which is right here. See how I got them taped off? These are the two that go to the volume control. So when we hear of people calling up and say they have no volume, first thing we ask is, is the volume control hooked up? And we find that many times um, these businesses that sell these jukeboxes, they disconnect their wall volume control, which is right here, and they leave these two wires disconnected so they have, they have no volume control. Um, control going to the amplifier. So of course, even if this is plugged in, the volume control plug, if these two wires are disconnected, you have no volume control. Another thing is, if you have low volume or volume in one channel, check these screws, the red and black wires. Sometimes they loosen up. If your ground loosens up, if the common loosens up, you're going to lose volume in one side of your, of your jukebox, or you're going to have low volume. All right? So, those are the main things for having when you're in a, when you have a situation where you have no volume, is you got to make sure you have you have volume going into your amplifier. Make sure your amplifier has AC going to your transformer that has amplification. And the next thing you may make sure you have a volume control circuit that is that is properly hooked up. If you have those things having you have a signal going in, you have amplification and you have volume control, you should have sound. Um, now we're going to talk about, there's one other thing that we didn't mention that could cause no sound. The other thing is, of course, you have the two plugs on the side, left side, which is your mute plug here, and your output transformer. The output transformer, um, if it's disconnected, if you have no wires connected here, um, then you would have no, 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 no sound to your speakers. Okay, this is what controls the wattage to your speakers. If these two, the, the pink and the purple wires are disconnected, you'll have no volume coming out of your speakers. That's one other thing. Another thing is on models row R89 and up, which is the next series of um, row record jukeboxes, it has a mute circuit in the computer. If the computer, if you got no sound and everything else is hooked up, there's just a chance that that mute circuit on the computer might be blown. Um, it happens probably one in 10 times when we do a, a computer, uh, we find this problem. Um, but again, that's not on this model here that we're talking. This one here doesn't have a mute circuit on the computer. Okay, so that's it for that. Now we're going to talk about distortion. Okay, what can cause distortion? We're going to go back to the tone on for a second. You're going to see that the cartridge, these wires are very fine. He's very fine. Sometimes these wires come off. Okay, they're very soft metal, and sometimes they just come off. Okay, and when they come off, sometimes you're going to have one of the grounds disconnected, and that's going to cause a little bit of the distortion. Sometimes it's going to cause you to have low volume. So make sure that you look at the, t the tone arm. Um, again, you can tilt it up like this. Look at the connections on the four ends of the cartridge. Make sure they're all connected. And then follow it down to the clip on the bottom of the clip right here. And make sure that those four connections aren't loose. If they're loose, all you got to do is slide it off, squeeze it with your fingers. It's soft metal. Don't use a pair of pliers. Just squeeze it a little bit tighter with your fingers, then slide it back on, and you should be all set. Um, that's that. That could cause a little bit of distortion. The next thing is speakers. How often do speakers go bad? On a roll record jukebox or CD jukeboxes, chances are. The up here, we, these are the mid-range speakers. These are six-inch mid-range speakers. You can see these are really old, but the cones are in pretty good shape, even though there's no breakage. A um, little discolorment, but not, they're, not, they're not broken, and they still sound really good. Um, but the other hand, the woofers do go bad. 
and especially on models R89 and up, on the record ones and then the CD models. And you'll see that the cones themselves have like a like a foam surround on the other edge. On, like about, it's about three quarters of an inch all the way around. Then you have the paper. Well, this foam totally gets deteriorated and just falls apart. When that happens, you're going to get muffled sound, like a distorted sound or low sound coming out of your woofers. And I'm going to show you a bad one here. This is a this is a bad woofer. As you can see, the cracks like right here, cracks over here, cracks over here, and this will just totally disintegrate. And when this happens, you're going to get distorted, muffled sound coming out of your woofers, or it's just going to be really low sound. So, if you ever need a pair of speakers, we do sell these woofers, and I'll show you what a new one looks like. This is a new one. As you can see, the foam's in really, really good shape. The cone's in excellent shape. So you can purchase these from us. If you, if you can't find them anywhere else, be happy. We'll be happy to sell you some. Uh, but we do sell them. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is the amplifier. Um, so we got good volume control circuit hooked up. The speakers, you get a good signal going in. You get amplification from, the, from your uh, AC coming into your uh, amplifier. Um, we're gonna we're gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna show you some little bit of experiment here. Okay. Okay, when I talk to you about AC, when I can't catch my unplug the amp, you see that while it's running, you got no AC going in. The volume control plug over here, you un if that's not plugged in, you have no volume control that way. You can plug that back in. Now, you can reverse the phono cartridge, you can invert that if you want. And one only thing that's going to do is going to just switch it from one side to the other. But if you do that, if you have no sound on one side, you can try doing that to see if you can identify. But that's only going to identify the signal here at the cartridge. It's going to tell you whether the cartridge is properly wired and, and, and also the clip. If you have no sound on one side, chances are it's going to stay that way even if you move that around. So this again, that's only to identify whether the cartridge wiring is, is loose or missing or off or whether the, the clip on the side of the tone arm. When you lose sound in one channel, we're going to talk about that now, um, the amplifier, chances are you're going to have a problem in one of the channels, one of the sides of the amp. And there's two sides of the amp. You have a, you have a left side and a right side. And then you have a preamp side that actually brings the two together okay to a stereo type of sound it kind of inverts the signal from one side to the other and then this is your output transistors which helps regulate the, the voltage to, okay to the driver boards and your filter caps okay that filter it and um, and this is your transformer the transformer regulates about 31 volts DC um, so when the, when the amplifier starts to go bad, what's going to happen is you're going to get distortion. You're going to get distortion on one side or both sides. Um, you're going to get either full volume where you can't turn the volume down. That's a sign that the amp is bad. Um, no sound at all. That could happen too. We're not going to get into repairing the amplifier, but I'm going to identify some things you can do to troubleshoot the amplifier and to try and test it out. Um, first thing you want to do on the amplifier I'm going to take out this amplifier. I'm going to show you some things to look for. Um, if you've never worked on an amplifier before, we suggest that you don't try to take an amplifier repair on yourself. Um, we see these coming all the time from people that try to repair them themselves, and they end up causing more damage than they would if they would have left it alone. And what happens is we normally have a one price for repair and one price for a rebuild. Um, yeah, it's better to get it rebuilt, 
but when people work on them themselves, a lot of times we have to rebuild it. We don't have any choice. But you could save a good amount of money if you just get it repaired in the first place from us. So what we're going to talk about the amplifier. The amplifier is hard to test if you don't have the proper equipment. But there's certain visual things you can do to identify a problem with your amplifier. I'm going to pull this out and show you the different stages of the amplifier. Okay, so there's the transformer. These are the, uh, these are the filter capacitors. This is your amplifier. Um, this, the transistors, the output transistors are under here. These are, heat sink. These are your transistors. There's four of them. These, um, these have heat sink compound under them, and they also have an insulator, fiberglass insulator. It's very important that these are installed properly and have the right uh, insulator on them, and they also the right heat sink compound because once they blow, they get really hot. And this aluminum heat sink assembly helps to keep them cool all the time. Um, those transistors come through on these four wiring harnesses. Those are connected to the transistors on the other side of the heat sink assembly. And they come into the driver board, okay? And these transistors, you have two types. You have an NPN and a PNP. Um, two of these are NPNs. And here are these two NPNs and these are two PNP, PNPs. It is very, absolutely critical that you use the right part number transistor when repairing an amplifier. If you don't, then you're just going to blow the transistors instantly. And you could cause damage to the driver boards. Um, fuses. It's very critical to use the same type fuses that you have on these boards, the same type and, and, and amperage rating. If you don't, you're going, to, you're going to damage the board. So these are what you call AGC, fast-acting fuses. They're, they're designed to, to blow fast. They're not to take a slow time to go. They go fast. And this is what protects the board. These are rated for 5 amps. Okay? So if you have a 5 amp AGC type fuse, then that's what... If you if they blow, they're not going to damage the boards. Okay? This is why I talk about rebuilds. Many of the rebuilds we do is because people put the wrong amperage fuse in it and it causes damages to the boards. Okay? They end up cooking different components on the board. And once they have a number of um, components that have been damaged, we won't repair them. We'll just replace the boards. Uh, our rebuilds, we put in new boards. We put in new driver boards, and we put in, we recondition or replace the preamp with a recondition board. Um, these are your filter caps right here. These two units here. These are the bottom side of your filter caps, and this is the preamp board. So there's really kind of four main stages. You got your filter caps, your two drivers, and your preamp. Okay. If you're not, these are all tied in together, okay? The filter caps are tied into the to the output transistors um, and the drivers. Um, the, the drivers are tied into the preamp. You get inverted signals going through it, left side and right side. And uh, if one component is bad on one of these boards, it's hard to identify which one it is. Um, but the most common thing you're gonna see is blown fuses. And once you do that, if you get a blown fuse, just keep in mind, you can't just fix it by replacing the fuse. What you want to do is you want to identify the transistor on the other side. You see how there's one, two, three, four fuses? If we open this up, you see there's one, two, three, four transistors. If you were to replace the transistor associated with that, with that um, fuse, chances are you'd probably repair the amp. But we, we ask you to do these in sets. Okay, so in other, me, in other words, if you have the, the NPN transistor, we ask you to place the matching NPN transistor on the other side. So this is a PNP, this is a PNP, this is an NPN, that's an NPN. There's numbers on them. This is a 2N6284, this is a 2N6287. So you will replace both the 87s or both the 84s, depending on which, which one went. So that's how you replace it. So you replace the transistors, and you also replace the fuses. If you do that, chances are you can repair these amps most of the time. But what happens is people don't install these correctly, and what they do, again, when you when you misinstall a transistor, you cause it to cause damage sometimes to the other the other side of the amplifier, the other transistor, or to the driver board. So you got to ask yourself. We don't tell you how to, how to repair the, amp the actual amplifier itself. 
but we actually we help you diagnose it down to the amplifier and then that at that point we do sell some parts we do sell the transistors and we also sell the driver boards um, I think we still do anyway uh, we can repair any of these components for you if you decide you want to get them repaired or have your whole amplifier tested repaired and, and shipped back to you so that's that's it those are the main problems you're gonna find now what we just talked about on the record amplifiers will will actually be the same for the CD amplifiers They're, they have similar designs they have the same driver boards same similar similar design as far as two driver boards one preamp board two filter caps um, so these are all pretty much similar design they're just in a different location um, the CD amps have a little more output. They have uh, 250 watts versus 125. But any one of these amplifiers would be able to blow you out of a room if you decide you really want to hear it loud. Um, one thing to look in, look at also when you're going to test your jukebox for sound issues is see if these two lights are on. These are overload indicators. They should not be on unless you have the volume up really super loud. Okay? So basically... The LED lights are off. They should not be on the overload. If they come on, that means you have a problem. I wouldn't go any farther than testing than that. So that's basically it for today. That's how you troubleshoot the sound issues on your amplifier. Just a little review. You want to check that you're making a good connection with your either your stereo, uh, your tone arm to your record. You have a tone coming off it. You have your phone harness hooked up properly. You have good connections on your cartridge. You want to make sure you have your amplifier plugged in to the AC plug. You want to make sure your volume control plug's hooked up right. And you also want to look at the terminal strip and make sure those wires aren't loose. If you do all these things, then chances are everything should be you should be getting good sound, good good quality sound out of your unit. Unless the amplifier itself is bad. And if it is bad, of course, again, like I said, we can give you a little bit of, we can give you some tech support over the phone, but at that point, you'd, you'd be required to either send it to someone to get it repaired or send it to us. It doesn't matter to us. We're here to help you. We're here to ensure that your jukebox will be up and working and sounding great for a number of years. I want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for joining us today on our new video series, You Can Do It, from Bruce Wentworth and A&B Jukebox Repair. Thank you. We'll see you soon.